Nick from Maximum PC here at GDC 2016. I'm here speaking with Mark from USENSE. And Mark, can you tell us what we're looking at here? Hi, so today we're going to show you a little bit of demo on our technology, which is focused towards hand tracking for AR and VR. Today we're going to show you hand tracking for VR. This demo is a moonwalk demo. You're on the moon. And we're going to look at my finger now, which is being tracked by our impression Pi. And what I'm trying to do here is do a single finger gesture control where I'm going to pull up some information about the sun. Now, we're not always in the right spot for the demo, but right there, you can see we're grabbing a little bit of information from the sun. Let's see if I can pull the sun closer. And of course, sometimes it works when I want it to. It does. <laughs> so what you're seeing there is you're actually seeing some infrared camera and RGB camera grab a picture of the hand and track the skeleton. And of course, it's going a different direction. And but is, the hand is actually your hand, though. Right? Not this is my hand. real hand. Yeah. yeah. What you're looking, th what you're looking through here is a mobile head-mounted display, an mm -hmm. HMD for VR, and we have cameras on a board in front of our HMD. So unlike the Google Cardboard, we have cameras input that can recognize the skeleton of the hand and then track some movement. And you're seeing right there the sun being effective. Now what the demo is attempting to do, but because the lighting and the tracking right now is being a little bit fussy, is trying to actually affect spinning the sun. Now if I push the sun back, it should go to where it should be. Now what I'm going to do is bring my finger up one more time and see if I can track the finger. But essentially what we're showing you here is interactivity to free your hands up from the controller. What we're trying to do is give developers of VR content the ability to give the end user a really natural experience. So while you're on the moon in this demo, you could be underwater, you could be learning how to cook, and you're tracking what is essentially a physical hand, but it's in a virtual environment. Now developers could build a knife that you could hold and do cooking simulation. Um, things like if you were gonna go into outer space to the moon, you could have a dashboard with buttons and UI that would allow you to click the buttons. And minority Report style. Minority Report style, exactly. Um, minority Report and Dr. Stark from the Avengers. Now I'm trying to keep the, the image for you uh, in, in, in line with the camera. But essentially what we're doing here is supporting a mobile phone. And the mobile phone is being used as the display and the processor. And we've got a head-mounted display that's got some hardware in the back here, a board that micro plugs. And then we've got cameras on the front. These are RGB cameras and infrared cameras. The infrared can track skeleton. The RGB is a way that allows us to actually provide positional tracking. So it's a depth? Depth. And then we have SLAM in our algorithm. Um, so we can actually provide VR and AR hands-free tracking and position tracking. And then the other thing we're doing, which isn't happening right here in this demonstration, is we can combine AR and VR together. And so right now we're working on three products. Our focus is hand tracking for VR. That's one of the big problems in the space right now, is how do you get away from that click on the temple? And right now the cardboard Android versions, iOS in uh, cardboard Gear version, VR, yeah. Gear VR as well, they all depend upon a click and a hand tracking that's up here on the temple, the forehead. That's not very uh, intuitive or immersive. So what we're trying to do is to free up your hands so that you can put the hands in front of the HMD and effectively do things like push buttons, pinch, pull, push, lift. And what we're doing is providing this technology for developers so that at the end of the day, we provide the tools for the content makers and we also support the ecosystem, the platforms, the hardware makers, everything that we do for hand tracking, we're trying to support around the world. So we're not in the business of trying to make hardware, although we had to make this hardware because it didn't exist, we had to prove the concept out. And in fact, this is the Impression Pi, it was a Kickstarter campaign last year. We'll ship these units out in June, starting in June 2016, but our goal and our target here at Game Developers Conference is to sign up developers. We have a developer program that will start in early May and we'll be providing developer kits and software SDK. We support Unity 3D, Java, and C++. So any developers out there can go to usense, usens.com. In a month, we'll have the developer program open. You can sign up and get a developer kit, piece of hardware, software. And again, our real focus is for mobile, but we support PC as well. Gotcha. Yeah, and uh, you know, earlier I got to try it on PC, and we tried a demo where it was, and I got to see AR. Um, and I think, you know, I got to see 
uh, a table that was really in front of me in real life using just like the camera, the past, I guess the pass through camera. And you guys had a statue on the table, but then in the headset, the statue was um, sort of redrawn to be like a cartoony statue. Yeah. Uh, can you elaborate on what's going on there? Yeah, so when we talk about ARVR, which will probably become a pretty well known acronym eventually, um, people call it mixed reality. We tend to call it super reality because what we're doing is putting together a virtual reality. In essence, we're building a pre-scripted scene or interactive environment. Let's call it a puzzle game. You're trying to get out of the room. We can build objects in the room that are virtual and puzzles to solve. But what we can also do is remove the walls around that virtual environment and let you play that game in the real world. What people haven't done up to this point is been able to experience a virtual reality that's augmented by their real world or vice versa. So what you're seeing in the demo that you're talking about, which is the Terracotta Warrior demo, you're going through time. You're seeing the Terracotta Warrior as it, as it looks today with no color, no paint. But then we can take you back in time to look at what the figures looked like when they were originally made and colored and painted. And what we're trying to do is expose a world that can be virtual for simulation training, gaming, uh, driverless cars, but also open up that virtual world to the real world. So we can expose location mapping, uh, we can expose real world objects that could have history embedded in a virtual um, UI or HUD. So putting AR and VR together in the future means literally doing all of the virtual experiences that you would ever imagine in life, be it half and half or all virtual or mostly augmented. So did the statue have any markers on it? How was it able to detect? The statue didn't. We are using some AR uh, techniques, which uh, are, can be triggered from markers. So scanning an image and recognizing the image mm. to turn on an experience. And we are doing that there. There's a tabletop cover that has markers that you saw. It was like jagged black and white lines. Okay. So we're capturing that and it's saying, you're now in this experience. And it's turning on the virtual pieces in that experience so that now we can start tracking those virtualized elements in the real world. And that part is a little bit more difficult to explain than to experience, but there are videos of that similar uh, demo, that same demo online. Gotcha. And then uh, you know, going back to the, you know, your technology, uh, you said you're not interested in you know, creating an HMD. Um, so do you guys hope to have this as an add-on for existing HMDs or forthcoming HMDs? Great question. So we're very interested in manufacturing hardware um, because we need the hardware to be out there. We're not focused on that because our domain expertise is in the software. We can get the lenses and the pieces to design and put together from a world that exists that's been working on this for 20 years. In fact, a lot of academics and strong researchers in VR and AR claim that there's been little innovation in the tech available for 20 years. The difference now is that the mass market has access to the hardware. So in designing and blueprinting the hardware, we're now able to partner up with the hardware makers to provide the design for what we need as the input for the experience. And then we support and our focus, our domain expertise is the software. The elements that we talk about, tracking the hand, the algorithm that has the computer vision in it. It has some AI in it, some deep learning, so that you can start to learn where the fingers went when they occluded what they do over time. So there is a component of computer vision and AI in our software, that's our big focus. And bringing that software to an existing marketplace that's already pretty hyped up and hungry for experiences, we think will help make the consumers and developers alike really get more compelled to be in VR and to want to have those experiences, especially interactively. Because I think a lot of people talk about watching films and things in VR. We're bringing tools that help make the interactivity in VR and AR more, more natural. That's really our focus. So are you guys targeting, you know, are you guys trying to work with you know, the, big, the big guys out there like the HTC Vive and the Oculus Rift and the Gear VR, or is it going to be? We are. We are not trying to be in the crowd of solutions looking for problems. So we feel we have some solutions for mobile that aren't there yet. We don't feel we've solved big problems for the tethered systems that don't exist because, of course, for Vive, Oculus, and PSVR, there are great controllers. Mm -hmm. Sony's already proved out their controller through PS3 and 4, the Move. It works really well, the Light Wand. Um, Vive is using Lighthouse technology with handheld controllers. Oculus has their Move. 
These are problems that have been solved by them. However, we do support those use cases. And where an end user and experience wouldn't want to be holding something, that's a solution that we can bring to the tethered use cases. So we're focused towards the mobile providers, the Android platforms, the Windows mobile platforms, the iOS platforms, the ecosystems that live in those platforms, the hardware makers that provide phones and tablets um, and hardware. So we, we really are ubiquitous in the support that we provide. We, we, we don't feel we have competition. In fact, we love the competition that's out there. And it's just some great technology that's similar to ours. But we, we really focused on these 2 billion plus mobile handsets that we think we can provide some really great solutions for. Cool. And then final question. How can uh, our readers and viewers at home uh, you know, learn more about you guys? So come and see us. The best thing, is, as you've experienced, is the actual demos. And in the next few months, there'll start to be more content available um, at our events. We, we, we go to as many events as possible. GDC, South by Southwest, SVVR Conference, AWE, E3, Comic-Con. Come out and see us. But definitely stay in touch with us on our website, sign up for our newsletter, and we, we can be found on two websites, but the main website is our name of our company, usens.com, www.usens.com. So come visit us there, and over the next few months, you'll get to start seeing how we come to market, which will be this summer, and commercialize our products, both with the Kickstarter deliverables, but you'll start to see a lot more support out into the bigger ecosystem where we can support the all of the hardware that's currently out there and coming out over the next few years. Cool, thank you, Mark. Thanks a lot, appreciate you guys coming, thanks a lot.